Verse 60 of John chapter 6, when many of his disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. That's our verse. That's what I want to key on. John 6, 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I've spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. And the result of that in verse 66, after this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with Jesus. Now we're talking more about the 70. Remember, Jesus had the three, the 12, the 70, and the 500, that's kind of how I think it, beyond 500, 500 plus, I guess I should say. So sort of those four groups, those four audiences that he spoke to, if he was speaking to the three, it was in a much more intimate way. These were his leaders, Peter, John, and James. Uh, Those guys were his leaders. He shared very intimate things with them, like the transfiguration. The transfiguration was something that those three guys experienced, none of the other 12 did. Then he taught to the 12 at times in, a, in an intimate way, maybe less intimate than the three. I think about this when I'm uh, talking to people, um, and maybe you've heard me talk about this before, but I just think about who am I talking to right now? Is it the three, the 12, or the 70, or the 500? Well, right here, when Jesus is teaching them this about the spirit giving life and the flesh is no help at all. He's talking to the 70 and and maybe a bigger crowd than that, really. But he's in the synagogue, he's teaching this, and he turns to the 12 in verse 67. Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and yet one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. Now there's a lot in here um, to unpack, just this end part of chapter 6. I mean, I'm not a fan of secular approaches. Here's what I believe and I believe the Bible teaches this, the word of God is sufficient to help the addicted. The gospel message is our message to share. So when we are working with addicted people, we need to be aware that we really need to rely upon the Holy Spirit. And we do that by opening the word of God teaching the Word of God, because not everybody understands it. I don't understand everything about the Word of God, uh, but what I have learned, I can share with other people and teach it to them, you know, just like a a 10th grade student who is taking geometry and almost finished with the course, going to graduate, move to uh, graduate into 11th grade. A 10th grade student ought to be able to teach a 9th grade student geometry, because what they've learned, they could teach some of those things. And it really helps to do that, by the way. That's why I believe the discipleship mandate in Matthew 28 is so important because uh, we need to go and make disciples, teach people what we've been taught. And that reinforces it in our own hearts.